This is Mr. Kaufman here from High Five History with a tutorial video showing you how to help your students annotate historical documents using Google Drawings. So first thing you want to do is you want to scale, log into your Google Drive account and get things set up. So here we have a, a set of directions that I have pre-created um, for the activity that I would want my students to do. In this case, I'm using the Byzantine Empire mapping activity. Uh, this is one of the first things that my students had annotated. So you can see here, um, I do have a set of directions, some guiding questions to help students think. And what you put on this direction document is completely up to you to meet the needs of, of your students. Adding more directions or less directions, depending on what you think uh, that they need. What I really like to do is, with my Google Documents, when I have directions, I like to embed the links to the actual work page that the students are going to use. So here I have highlighted already Google Drawing Document. Right? So I'm going to link this to what the students need to get done. Now, over here is my blank Google Doc, uh, excuse my, my blank Google Drawing. I would insert the image or whatever it is I wanted my students to annotate. In this case, it's the Byzantine Empire a map from 565. I have pre-sized it to fit the size of the page, but just like any other Google um, application or really any other Microsoft or other program, all the basic uh, tools are, are very similar on how to get things done. Uh, one thing to note here though is down at the bottom, uh, you can see here my mouse circling around, uh, when you hover over the corner of the Google Drawings page, it allows you to resize that as well. So you can get that to fit um, exactly the, the map, or you can make it slightly larger to encourage your students to uh, write around uh, the map. All right, so once you've done this, you're going to go up to the link, and here's a, a really neat trick for Google. Uh, actually, one step back, make sure that this document is shared so that students will have access to it. So if you go in here to advanced, right, specific people can access, or you go in here to allow uh, people to access it. So in this case, I would use anyone with a Carol Morgan or a school account. All right, save. So once the sharing options are ready, I could copy the link from there, but I want to show you this cool trick. Um, so if you go up to the link, the last word you can see says edit. Right? You don't want, though, the students to get access to this very document to edit it, because then all the students are going to be working on the same one. So all you simply do is erase edit, type in copy. All right, so Erase, edit, type, and copy, and you're going to copy your um, link, highlight the words that you want to link to it, go to my link button, paste my new link in there, hit apply. So now my directions are ready for the students. All I would have to do is share this document um, with them using any uh, tool or however you usually share our links. For example, we use Moodle here, or you can simply put it up on the board. Now, once the student opens this up, and they click on this link because they're ready to do their work, it's going to make them make a copy. So that's what I did. When I went there and I changed um, the link and I changed it from edit to copy, what it does is when the student clicks on that link, it again asks them to make a copy. Now all of your students are going to have their own, right, their very own document to work on. Okay, so this is an important step and, and a neat trick that works for all of the Google apps, right, Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sheets. Uh, so this is a great trick for you to use um, anytime you want to uh, create something for your students to make. All right, so that they have their document and they can begin annotating. So they're going to use all the normal tools that they would want to use, right? They could add in shapes. For example, uh, they want to draw a shape around, let's see, a circle around Constantinople. All right, they could go in here. All right, they would edit the shape like normal, work into fill color, let's make it transparent line color red uh, let's make it a little bit thicker so it stands out a little more all right and there we go now let's say you really want to get a zoomed in view to get the circle just around constantinople you go over to your zoom button or to view and you can zoom in and out that way all right and the students could really get in there and circle exactly what they wanted to do all right uh, they could add text boxes in this is the capital of the empire. Now, a cool trick I think here to, to help the 
annotations really stick out, and this is where uh, Google is going to really um, enhance the student's work, is if you go in here to the text box, again, we're going to format it. We're going to make it a color. But when you make it a color, see, it blocks the map. I don't like that. So I'm going to go back there, click on Custom, and now I'm going to make it a little transparent. Right? Let's bring it down to there. And now you can, see it, you can still see it in the map, but now it pops out. Right? And now let's say I want to draw an arrow there again just to make it a little bit clearer. Go into my arrow. All right, Google Drawings is asking me there with that purple dot to attach the arrow right there, as well as giving me some spots to attach it. Let's attach it right there. And I'm going to form on my arrow. I'm going to change the color. Let's make it that nice blue. Let's make it a little bit thicker so it pops out. All right, and so forth. All right, so that's how to do some basic annotations. But that's not really using our Google Drawings app to really benefit. Now, one of the guiding questions on the directions asked my students to consider um, where the Silk Road was in relationship to the Byzantine Empire, right? Because I want them to really focus in on how the location of the empire was beneficial uh, to its success. So I would think for my students, they might not know exactly where the Silk Road comes in. They, at this point, know it, it goes from Asia over to Europe. But I want them to get some exact locations. So what do they do? If they're going to go open up a separate tab and they're going to search it, right? Silk Road Map. Right now, they have all these images that they can then choose from, right? And this is, again, where they're going to really improve the capabilities of annotating. Uh, let's say they want to use this image to enhance. All right, they could go in, copy the image, right? and they could insert it in. Now they could put it over to the side, right? change the size and make it bigger. Um, what you can also do, and I think this is a pretty neat application, you can also, again, change the transparency of your photo, right? So if we go to image options, right, over here, let me zoom up a little bit, right, adjustments, transparency, right? So you can make it a little more transparent. Uh, let's say you wanted to have it hover over your map to get an exact location, right? The, the limits really here are, are, there really are many limits here and what you can do to really use this app to benefit. Now, for time's sake, I can show you what a final copy might look like. All right, so based on the guiding questions that I provided for my students, right here is what a final map might look like when they're done annotating. Adding in the Silk Road, right, the Silk Road map here, right, using their uh, map in here, and all the text boxes to really improve their annotations. Now, of course, this doesn't apply just to annotating maps. You can have them annotate a visual source. They had to compare or to talk about the influence of, of Roman legacies, and they wanted to do architecture. Right here is the visual source of a, a Roman uh, ruins. And again, they can then bring in a modern building that has the columns, like the White House um, or the Capitol, the U.S. Capitol building. And again, it would enhance their annotations. It would work for written sources as well, where you could highlight, underline, circle words, and add in notes, as well as for maps. Now, some other added benefits of using Google Drawings is its capability of sharing. So students, if they wanted to collaborate together, could create one map, share it, and work together. It also allows them to share their work with you. And you can then give them comments either in real time, meaning as they're working, if you have it open on your computer or an iPad or, or anything like that, you could give them comments right away saying, hey, what do you think about Silk Road? Where does that come in? Or how about you add in an additional image to enhance your annotations? But it also allows you then to comment and give the students feedback from anywhere. Right? This prevents you from having to lug home all those papers. You simply just open your computer up at home, access the document that the student has shared with you, and give the students feedback. So that's it. Mr. Kaufman here from High Five History with a tutorial instructional video showing you how you can help your students annotate using Google Drawings.